Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at a, qu a request I get often and that is how to make a super mega giant custom menu. They don't really say it that way. But how to make a custom menu in Adobe Muse CC. Uh, the ability to make a menu that's designed specifically the drop down with all the options you want instead of just the built in menu widget. So let's take a look at how this works. Now I've got a Muse site up open here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the browser and show you the end result. So let's head over to the browser and you can actually go to this site yourself. If you go to uh, playfestdemo.com, you can see an example of this site built with Muse complete with uh, animations, scroll effects and the whole nine yards. But also at the very top, if we go to artist, it drops down with one of those big giant custom mega menus. And it's even got rollovers for each artist uh, that's also custom and we'll show how to do that as well. So this is a custom menu built and designed from scratch uh, using Photoshop, Illustrator, and of course Muse to make it all work. So let's now go see how to put it together. Now I'm in Muse, I've got my site, I've added all my pages, I've got my content ready. And I've even gone in on the master page and laid out the graphics that will be my menu. Now at this point, you can either, here, let me get out of this tool. You can either um, use the regular menu and just tell it to turn off or hide one of the pages that you wanna make a custom menu, or you can just simply place graphic elements like I've done here and then um, either assign them as hyperlinks to the pages they go to, or uh, use the menu option that we're gonna show here how to create it, or how to, how to uh, customize it. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our widget library, and the first thing you're gonna need is a composition widget. Now the composition widgets are pretty cool, but they're also, they also make great custom menu options. Uh, you have blank, featured news, light box display, presentation and tool tip, and they're kind of really all the same widget just with preset options turned on or off. So we're gonna go ahead and choose the blank one, and we're just gonna go ahead and drag it onto our page. Now, the blank one and most of the widgets always default to three um, states or three options. And of course, for a menu, we really only need one. We're gonna make the artist menu. So we're gonna go to the, the, uh, each trigger. We're gonna go to the third trigger and just hit our delete on our keyboard. Just backspace or delete it out. We're gonna go to the second trigger and hit delete on the keyboard just to get rid of it. And so now that leaves us with the trigger and the target. Now all we do is we take the trigger, which we can move around separately, and we put it up here over the artist button. Now I know it looks like it's covering the artist button, and it is, and we're gonna remove that fill and remove the stroke and kind of make it look the way we want. But then before we do all that, we just wanna make sure we get it all working first, and then we can make it look right cosmetically once we're done. Now we're gonna pick up this box, which is going to be our drop down menu, and we can put this wherever we want. I wanna put it right below this um, black rectangle, and I can make it as big as I need it to be, and uh, as big as I need to span out. Now, while, you're, while you've got this box selected, anything is fair game here. You can put anything in this box you want. Now, the thing I wanna point out is that both the trigger and the uh, composition box itself, the target, they all have states or fills or strokes or all kinds of things going on. So I wanna make sure that we remove the fill. We don't want that blue color in there and we remove the stroke. We don't want that line around it. And also uh, under the target, we wanna make sure that it has no other states. In other words, we don't need to have a rollover, mouse down or active state. So we have the normal state where it's just a clear box with no stroke. Now we can go ahead and fill that box with our background graphic. You can either place the background graphic inside or you can just use the fill command to fill it. So for example, um, I'm gonna hop over to Photoshop and show you what the background graphic looks like. By the way, this is the graphic for one of our menus. Someone asked, well, what size do I make the little buttons? And uh, the button size here, I'll just show you. In my case, it's 310 uh, pixels wide by 75. 
And of course you can scale that once in Muse to whatever you want. Now the background um, for the uh, menu itself for the target is this big purple shape. Again, it's a Photoshop file. Maybe it started off as an Illustrator file, but it's just a ping at this point. And uh, we can go in and, and customize that with transparency and just make it whatever size, shape, color, design you want. And you don't even have to have a background unless you want one. Okay, so now that we know that it's background artist menu ping, so let's head back over to Muse and we're just gonna use the fill command and we're gonna fill that with an image. We're gonna fill it with, you guessed it, background artist menu ping. And if I hit the space bar, yep, that's the one I want. So once it fills it with that, now we see the size of it and we know that we don't need our rectangle to be this big anymore. We can go, go ahead and resize that down and get that just the size of the shape of the uh, object inside. Now, you might say, well, you said you could fill it or place it. Why didn't you place it? Well, if I place it versus fill, then it's just one more thing that I have to worry about not clicking on. In other words, I don't want to accidentally move it. I don't want to click on it when I'm trying to put other things inside here. By using it as a background fill for this target, I don't ever have to worry about it being in the way. All right, the next thing we want to do is um, we want to make sure, we, we want to test our target to make sure it works. So let's go back to this button, our trigger, and let's go ahead and take care of it. Now for the states here, I want to get rid of the active state. I want to get rid of any other states, get rid of the mount rollover state, and just go to the normal state. And on the normal state, I want to go ahead and say that it has no stroke and it has no fill. So it's just a clear box because people are gonna see the word artist and come over and click on it and that's what I want. Now, in order for this to work, I want them to be able to mouse over the word artist or click the word artist and the menu drops down, but of course it can't go away once they move off this box. It has to stay there. So let's go ahead and set our options. So our first option is going to be show the target on Roll over, and meaning that they can roll over this target or roll over this trigger and see the target. The next one is going to be when to hide the target. We want to hide the target on roll out of the trigger and target, meaning when they roll out of this area completely, then the menu will go away. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, we also want to say hide initially, so it's not dropped down when you first load the page. So those are the three main things you want to control. You want to control when it shows, when it disappears, and of course that it's not there to begin with. And uh, we want to, sh you know, this is checked by default, but we want to show the light box parts while we're editing, while we're working on this. Now, if we were to preview this in browser right now, this is what it would look like. Preview page in browser. If we did everything correctly, it should just work when I hover over artists. There it is. I can play around inside this box all day long. As soon as I hover outside of it, it goes away. So home, artist, schedule, news, artist is there. So that's our beginnings of our mega menu. So now let's go back and let's put some content inside. Let's go back to the target, make sure it's selected, make sure you see the outline around it. And now what I wanna do is I wanna put a Photoshop button inside of it. One that I designed in Photoshop to have that rollover effect for each of my artists. So let's head back over to Photoshop and see how to build one of those. Um, I've got these two distinct graphics and they're not even the right size. One is bigger than the other. So let's go to this one. Uh, the first one, we're going to see that the image size for it, they have to be the exact same size in order for this to look right. So 400 pixels by 400 pixels. So this one also needs to be 400 pixels by 400 pixels, or it needs to be, you know, the other one needs to be smaller. So let's go ahead and make this one 400 using the new upsampling capabilities of Photoshop. We'll keep that nice and clean. And now we're going to come over to this one. We're going to grab our move tool and we're just gonna move this layer up to the tab and then down into the image to move it in place. And since they're the exact same size, it fits perfectly. Now we're gonna go ahead and rename our layers so that it makes sense once we get back to Muse. So this is going to be our over layer and 
we'll unlock this layer and this is going to be our composite layer or it could be the normal layer whatever you want to call it now we're going to save this as a photoshop file so let's do a save as and it's already called nav mary we'll keep that we'll save it out to the desktop in a folder where i'm keeping all of these buttons all right so now that it's been saved we'll head back over to muse and we'll go ahead and place it so let's do place photoshop button this is how we use buttons from photoshop to make them work place photoshop button we want the nav mary button and same thing here we we want to make sure we change these layers to be right so that's the over layer that is correct but the composite layer should be actually composite so now composites composites overs over click ok and then we can um, place this and put it anywhere we want so let's go ahead and place this here and I'm going to make it about 157 or so pixels. There we go. There we go. And there's our button. So now if we were to preview this, well, before we preview it, let's go ahead and hook it up and make it work. So the last thing we need to do is actually make this a link that goes somewhere. So we're just going to go ahead and say that we're going to add this link to our artist page. Um, artist uh, Mary Yamamoto. And there it is. So now it's actually linked to go to Mary. So if we were to preview this page in browser, this is what it would look like. So menu, hover, rollover state. And if I were to click, it would then take me to that page. So that's all you have to do to make your custom mega menus from Muse. Now, of course, you're not just limited to images. You could put anything in this container you want. So for example, I've got in my library, I've saved some elements here. I've got the uh, ninja button. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that over and I can put that in place and scale that to make sure that's about the right size. I have the Jesse button, same thing. Let's pull that, put that in place. And again, we'll put it over and we'll use smart guides. We'll make sure it's the right size. There we go. There's our Jesse button. And I can, of course, even put uh, text. If I want to put a text frame in there, I can put a text frame in there as well. So I can make my mega menu be anything I want it to be inside there. I can have a little video in there if I want. I can have anything in there I want, a map, whatever. Whatever other widgets you want to put in. You want to put your social widgets in, drag your social widgets in whatever you want that menu to contain. So now if we go ahead and uh, preview this page in browser one more time. And we hover over the artist menu and we have each one of our rollovers that we can play with as well as a hyperlink to follow us on Twitter, which we would probably want to change the colors of that link. Um, but you have the idea here that you can make your menus whatever you want. And just as a side note, for those of you uh, who are making your sites mobile friendly, you're making a mobile layout. If we head over to my iPhone here and we head over to Safari, I've got the Playfest demo uh, site running on my iPhone in Safari and the mobile menu is simply one of the composition widgets that drops down and has the custom elements inside that menu. Tap again and it rolls up. Now you can either do that with an accordion widget or the composition widget as I've shown here. So either way you wanna do it, you've got your ability to have your custom mega menu. Hope you learned something from this episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White, thanks for watching. Bye.